Saturday. We've had our first New Year's Eve miracle. Because yesterday, I got called up at 6 o'clock. Ahead of a 7 o'clock show, 10 minutes away. And I was able to say yes. And, I played most of a 3 hour show on a huge stomach full of 30 hour chili which is not something I would ever take on normally and you know what it was fine I didn't even need any tongues that's a miracle it was also nice to get a show out of the blue after playing the open mic night there the night before I love how it works I have climbed highest mountains. I have run through fields on the beach. Only I have run. I have crawled. I have skied these city walls, these city walls, just to be But I still have inside of me and I don't need to go looking anywhere. But I still have it.
When the storm clouds fill your eyes And they overtake your smile I know that you'll be Oh, just a little while That every single question after asked about Why or how is simply answered It's the truest thing in the song, right? Every single way think that we need multiple answers, but every single question is answered pretty simply. Be here in this moment, right now. Just open your awareness to the now. Let the imagined future drop. Let the reconstructed memories of the past drop. Be in this moment. Watch a squirrel, watch a bird. Be here now. And truly, um, Figuring that out has been what opened up my flow. Um, figuring that out is what allowed me to let go of a lot of the noise in my head. Um, the noise comes from our perceptions of the future, colored by our mood, our understanding of the past, colored by our mood. The answer, just be here now. Watch with me. A harvest moon is rising yonder past that old tree. So stand and shout, sing and dance. Life's upon you, you're alive. Every now is a chance. Follow those freedom feelings down. Here now. I talk about following freedom feelings down. The way I like to think of it is I imagine myself in a boat. On the ocean. On those old sailboats. And on the surface, it can roil a bit with the weather. Sometimes not, but the weather's up at the top. Sometimes to get quiet, I drop over the side of the boat of my perception of myself to the quiet underneath it. I swim down there and I discover there's a hole in the bottom of the me. There's a hole in the bottom of the me. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the there's a story in the hole, the bottom of the me. There's a story in the hole, in the bottom of the me. There's a hole, way down below the boat, at the bottom. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the me. It's where the songs are, it's where the poems are, it's where insight lives, innovation lives. Not up there with the noise. Get down in the quiet. Use whatever metaphor you need to, but... Mindfulness does have a huge impact. And this is a song I wrote so that I could speak to that musically in the stuff that I'm out doing. But by staying in the approximate moment and by understanding how the future really works and how the past really works, how they're not really things yet, um, the past is gone. I mean, I remember it, but you remember it too. We might remember the same day differently. Past us, it's relegated to, the, to memory. Um, memories that we've captured with our minds, with our pictures, with our words. But it's, uh, it's done. Future, it's imagined. So I just kind of live here in this moment. And I, take, I follow the wind of this moment in the direction that it's going. And I don't steer by the wind. I stare by the stars. I have some very fixed points in the sky above me that I look to, that I trust. Three pretty big important ones. And um, by following those stars, by knowing where those stars are and understanding those stars to some degree, I'm able to do all the stuff I do. Um, and I don't think it's... You know, people tell me I work hard. People tell me whatever they say. That's what they think. That's what they say. They can think and say what they think and say, but... I don't feel like I work hard at all. 
And at the same time, I'm not beating the shit out of myself for being some lazy fucker who doesn't get enough done, which is how I used to be, right? And be like, ah, not getting enough done. Not getting... And you know, back then I was just focusing on one thing. I mean, it was parenting and being a partner, but I was also just focused on being a writer. Um, I didn't add the music back in until a while, you know, into this whole thing. Kicked it to the curb when I left the ministry. Didn't realize that this is my instrument of power, just as mighty as the pen. But anyway, I got a nice weekend lined up for me, I think. I didn't expect to have a show last night, but I love going out and doing that. And um, I might have a little crush on one of the other bartenders. Uh, super cute, but it's okay. I get a lot of crushes, which is how it works. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that the chore I'm least excited about this weekend is starting what I call Ken Inc. 2022. It's the uh, it's my tax spreadsheet of all of my business expenses and income. And it's the business expenses that takes forever because I've got to go through all. I'm not a person who's. I mean, it'd be awesome if I was that person who's like, ah, oh, I'll put this, I'm going to record it as I go. Pow. But the one thing I did do differently this year is that every gig I played is in my calendar, along with all of my expenses for that gig um, and my uh, payment for that gig. <coughs> so if I put it in my calendar the day of, <coughs> excuse me, that has helped me track really well. And this is a season where I'm not spending as much on my... I mean, my writing isn't costing me anything. I'm not going to conventions. I'm not... Uh, you know, the stuff I'm doing is minor in that regard. The more expensive thing I'm working on right now is getting the album recorded because I'm paying... Uh, I pay Joseph per song for the songs, for my songs that he produces. We have some things we want to do together where we'll... That'll just be, you know, he and I making nickels together on... Uh, some meditation music we're talking about called calling it the Camden Schools Peace Project, which I like. Uh, and um, as a matter of fact, I got my new uh, my new Leckholm DM48, which is a MIDI controller. Uh, it's a harmonica, and um, let's see it, it well not very easily, but it's uh, interesting an interesting device, an expensive device, but. It's going to allow me to um, play a harmonica, but create a viola or strings of other kinds or flutes or, um, you know, any of that, any MIDI sounds. I'll be able to now make it work with, uh, with my harmonica knowledge, which is useful. Um, so all of these, you know, most things have been leaning towards getting intellectual property down because you know, I've got a great body of work for short stories, right? Three collections worth, four collections worth now. I have to put the fourth collection together. But, um, novels, you know, that whole thing is feeling pretty established. But the music, I have songs that I wrote in the 80s that are just floating out there. Many that I've already forgotten. Uh, I have to go digging through boxes of old, old stuff to figure out any of the lyrics because nothing. Back then there weren't computers. I just have a big box of notes. And... Um, but I, uh, yeah, this last little while has been all about getting music captured in different ways. You know, live shows to get the songs initially published, um, studio releases to flesh out the songs with Joseph's uh, talent. Um, you know, and then and that's, of course, meant the equipment, like this travel guitar, right? This is spendy, but it'll fit in the airplane compartment uh, when I want to fly and play. Um, I had to buy a backup sound system this year because... I had gigs going on, and my first one had a minor problem, but it meant that it was out of commission for weeks. So I ended up picking up a second uh, amp. And then this is also the year that I realized that my Wonder Room sits empty most of the time. Um, it's a backup overflow room, right? It's also where the fold-out couch is. But uh, all of the books in there make it an amazing studio space for recording. So now I have a home studio. Um, and I'm learning how to use it, but I don't enjoy recording alone. I'd much rather have a person hanging out and helping me with it. Um, so it's been a really, you know, I'm looking at my year, 2022, 
it was a year of getting Ken's music lined up to come into the world. Um, and I think that we're going to see, <clears throat> excuse me, we have eight of the 12 songs for the first, for the album, Back Into the Land of Living. We have eight of the 12 with stems. We've got one already released. We've got one almost released. Um, but I'm betting that you're going to see a bunch of songs come out between January and March uh, on the album. And that's going to feel good. What else happened last year? Think about that. You know, the writing is so back burner now, which I don't, I mean, I, getting rid of that urgency inside of me that insisted I wasn't ever doing enough and that I needed to do so much more, getting rid of that noise uh, has helped me a great deal. Um, Writing-wise, I've you know written some stories this year that I'm, I'm pleased with. One of them uh, got me my first mention in Publishers Weekly in a while. I mean, it was nice there for a bit. Every year I had something coming out and Publishers Weekly was saying nice things about me. Um, but that's been years and years gone, right? Because I've slowed way down. But still, Harley Takes a Wife is coming out in um, David Boop's uh, Weird Space Western. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Gunfight at Europa Station, but I I don't remember. Or something, Centaur Proxima. I, I get all mixed up with all the different titles. But, but I'm in there with Harley Takes a Wife. And... Um, and then I also have a, uh, a new Isaac story coming in August in Robots of the Ages. So that'll be fun. But, you know, this year is the year of, um, you know, the year ahead is looking pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, I have an event that I'm putting together in Astoria for people with complex PTSD called uh, Making Friends with the Monsters Underneath Your Bed. Then it involves me reading my short story, my therapy story from a long time ago called The Monsters Underneath His Bed, uh, and singing eight or ten songs, you know, influenced by my life with PTSD, which, I mean, everything I've ever done in my life is influenced at some level by that experience of my childhood. So, so that's coming in February. And then uh, April, I'm going to be doing the keynote speech for a annual event for a non-profit in Vernonia. That's still very early in the planning stages, but, but those are the things that I get excited about. And that's why I'm out doing all this, so that I can also try to help communities and non-profits with the things that I've learned along the way. Lines and crimes and clowns and me Are hanging from this Judas tree Hey, Catherine I try to shake this thorny crown Pull out those nails and come on down But I'm held fast By someone else's past and pain Someone else has passed the pain. How are things out your way? Signs and times and harmony. And scars and art are parts of the suit that saves my soul. The shattered mirror that cuts me whole. And I held fast by love that last. My love that last. I don't know, but I've been told that heaven's streets are paved with gold. More like blood to me, baby, and that's the
held fast by love at last by love at last a little song called love song to my future self that I wrote 15 years ago I didn't know what it was I didn't even know what to call it and one day when I became my future self enough to recognize it I was like oh that's a song that I wrote about me back before I knew me nice to meet you Ken I'm held fast by love at last and you by love at last and you my future self I think is really ultimately the only higher power we can truly reach for, but, but who am I? <coughs> well, I'm supposed to clean my gutters out today, but Rachel and I did it. Uh, Lizzie had a play date over, so... Rachel and I slipped out and cleaned the gutters together. She's like, why exactly am I here again? Well, I'm on a ladder. I need you to dump the bucket of muck. And I need you to keep an eye on your father so that if he falls off the ladder, there's somebody there to call for help. Of course, she would have laughed and pointed. She, would, she might have called for help eventually if I cried. But anyway... Anyway, that was my big outdoor chore that I was going to do today, and now I don't have to. So I'm going to mess around with things in the house. I'm going to start the tax prep. <sighs> Something else I thought I was going to poke at my... Uh, I got this self-help book that I'm working on. Hoping to have it done in March or April. Uh, I'm finally setting some goals and deadlines. It was a long, long research project. You know how that goes. You get started in the research and then you just never stop. And you just never stop. And you just never stop. And then you just keep saying, well, i got to learn a little, a little more. I just know a little bit more and then I'll be ready. Nah, I've been ready to write this for a while, so it's time. Well. And of course, I'm catching up on TV. <clears throat> I think I have some new episodes of Titans, Willow. Uh, I think there's, well, and I'm almost done. I'm in the... Uh, the end of the sixth season of Deep Space Nine, one of the only Star Treks I haven't seen all the way through. Um, I think I got about three seasons in, and then my life bogged down. I was leaving the ministry and changing belief systems, and going into therapy, and then eventually starting a divorce. All that stuff back in the 90s, I think, shut down my Star Trekking. Because I also missed periods along the way. I missed like the second half of the Enterprise season series the second half of the Voyager series. But I got all caught up on all of those. Deep Space Nine just always sat because it wasn't as interesting to me that they were in this one fixed place. Um, and of course, that blown out of the water. I think Deep Space Nine has maybe some of the best Star Trek writing I've read. Or read, seen. Uh, really great stuff. Didn't realize that Ron Moore was so involved and he, of course, was the guy that reimagined Battlestar Galactica in such an awesome way. Anyway, today, tomorrow, I think it'll be quiet. Uh, last night was my big raucous go out and play the show. You can hear it in my voice. Um, but I also played Thursday, too. I only played for a little while, but I'm a tired boy. Um, but I've got my uh, rubber chicken sitting right here waiting. Anyway, I guess I'm going to do one more song, and then I'm going to maybe vanish out of here. Let's see what kind of song do I want to do. My American Dream song. Couched in a road trip. My belief that we can build a better America with room for everybody on the road. There 
is a place I'd like to think We can find our way back to Somewhere in time and space Not far from here We can just drive ourselves straight through Headlights burning up the highway Moonbeam clouds in our rearview mirror Wide open starshine in a Guthrie skyway Love can be no clearer Love can be no clearer Because love is as love does Just you and me Driving here Searching for something we can steer it to Oh, say can you see There up ahead Dawn's early brush shining bright upon you Wind is whipping sand across the highway The past is laughing in my rear view mirror Pink on trails in a Pan Am skyway Home can be no nearer Home can be no nearer Radio sinks. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. The rain is gone. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. sure I'll be back tomorrow for some Trailer Boy Church, but we'll see. All right. Have a beautiful day.